finally freaky friday has arrived and we're at the end of the spring camp position previews the ohio state buckeyes will be on the practice field on tuesday cannot wait to be there and we're gonna wrap up the position preview with the quarterbacks you know just last but certainly not least that's bill landis and jeremy birmingham i am austin ward bill what's going to happen over the next uh six weeks I want to give you props for that finally there. That was good. That was pretty good. Um, uh, fortunately, he's been back, so I can actually try and get the inflection right. And... <laughs> uh, what the next six weeks at quarterback are going to look like, I, I don't know. I'm 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 interested in what day one's going to look like. Like, is Devin Brown going to take the first quarterback snap? Pro like, I guess let's take, let's take a poll here. Who's going to take the first quarterback snap, Devin Brown or Will Howard? Like when they line up in their first team period, assuming when we get to see it, um, who will be the first guy to take a snap? I think it's going to be Will Howard. Would you say? Would you say Will Howard? Berm? I think it'd be Devin Brown. I think I think Berm said because he didn't want to answer. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he wanted to make a prediction. Brooklyn <laughs> Keenholz. So, we each took three different guys. Then, yeah, I kind of think it'll be, I think it'll be Devin Brown. Not that it matters all that much. It's just an interesting dynamic because Ohio State has brought in a well-known transfer quarterback with a lot of fanfare around him, I think. A guy that, like, he's the one who has shown up on the preseason Heisman odds, not not Devin Brown, but Devin Brown is the veteran in the sense that he's been on the Ohio State roster longer than Will Howard has and has played more games in an Ohio State <clears throat> uniform than Will Howard has. So I'm... I'm just curious what that looks like. I don't think it means anything long term because I think we all believe that Will Howard will be the team starting quarterback in the fall. But it is like a weird dynamic because even when they were doing the stuff with Justin Fields in 2019, where they were refusing to name him the starter, even though everyone knew he was going to be, he was still taking all the first snaps. Right? He was he was still treated like the number one quarterback. Um, and I think Ohio State is interested in trying to keep Devin Brown around if it can. So does it do that by treating him like the number one quarterback? early on in practice until it becomes apparent that Will Howard is the number one quarterback. I, I, I don't know how Ryan Day plans on playing that, um, but the end result should certainly still be that by the end of spring practice that we all believe, as we do now, that Will Howard is going to be the team's number one quarterback. I think you can I, – I, I would certainly listen to the argument that Devin Brown's two years in that position room, two years in the program – familiarity with the offense means that when you roll out there and like sometimes we do make too much out of the order and stretching lines but also they usually are put in that order for a good reason so think well maybe if they say he's the most veteran guy at ohio state that he would be at the front of the line and i will find out on tuesday so we can make these bold predictions and we won't have to wait long to find out but i, I think that if our other hypothesis is correct that Ohio State believes Will Howard to be the starting quarterback and took him out of the transfer portal for a reason uh, to help them win a championship in his one year available at the college ranks, then the one who has to be treated like the starter is the one that you think is the starter. You put him, you let him establish the leadership, you let him take the first team reps because he's going to need a lot of them. He's learning a new offense that you know we've said a lot of times over the last month and a half, it's different than what he played in at Kansas State uh, and the skill set and then plays and the familiarity and chemistry with the offensive line and the wide receivers and the running backs is all different. Like I I tend to think that the actual competition and the rep rotation will come with Devin Brown and Lincoln Keenholz and not necessarily for Will Howard. But I, if I'm wrong about that, then, of course, I'll be the first to stand up and admit that I was. I think you're right. I mean, long term, I think you're right. I, I would... I would imagine maybe by practice too, Will Howard would be the first one in line. But I, I think I come Tuesday when it's okay, this is how we do things at Ohio State. This is the order in which we go. I think you, Devin Brown, is a safe bet to do that. But again, as we've talked about since January, you don't bring in Will Howard unless your intention is for him to be your starting quarterback. Will Howard does not eschew the NFL draft for Ohio State unless his belief is that he's going to be the starting quarterback. So uh, how long it takes for that to be established, um, we we are not privy to all of the details of winter workouts and how that has gone as far as leadership, as far as how other guys on the team have responded to Will Howard. 
Uh, it seems to me from people I've spoken to that things are going very well in that regard. But we continue to see Devin Brown doing the things that Devin Brown has done and, and posting things that are saying, hey, I'm fighting for this job. I'm here for it. Um, and I guess the question is that I have, if you guys were putting this on a, on a 1 to 10 scale, what are what number would you put on the chances of Devin Brown emerging as the starting quarterback at Ohio State by the end of spring? Mm. Hmm. I was going to ask just like more directly, like what if Devin Brown's good? Then what happens? But uh, I put a number on it. Three? I don't know. Four? Four might be high. Maybe three, two or three. I think 25% is probably about where I'd be. Uh, so two and a half, I guess. I mean, Will Howard is a a heavy, heavy odds on favorite here. And he's played more college football. He's been in more weight rooms. Uh, he was handpicked by Ryan Day to come lead this offense with one year available to him. You know, I don't think all of that is immediately thrown away. Now, I'll say the, that Devin Brown has now had another winter workout to go through. He has been in the system, as I mentioned, for two years. So he, he knows what Ryan Day is looking for. We know that there is confidence uh, from the Ohio State coaching staff that they know he could add some elements as a rushing threat for Ohio State. Uh, his teammates have responded incredibly well to his vocal leadership style. All those things count for something as well, too. And they, they're going to have to go out there and prove it uh, when it matters. And, and they'll track every throw and they'll have 15 practices in, in March and April to, to make their case. And then in August, there'll be practice number 16 in the battle if we want to call it that, will continue for Ohio State. But, you know, it. he is, Devin Brown is the underdog. And I think that there's a part of this berm, too, that Lincoln Keenholz now has more reps and experience under his belt. He also has an ability to run the football. He has also resonated with teammates with his leadership style. So I, I don't even think that it just has to be a conversation of Devin Brown versus Will Howard. If... If Devin Brown is legitimately in that mix, then I would think that there's a, a case to be made that Lincoln Keenholz would be too. Yeah, I, and that's where things get very interesting. Uh, we don't often like to discuss things like who's going to transfer or stuff like that, but like you look ahead here and it, it seems like highly unlikely that all three of these guys are on the roster come April 30th. So it, it does have a bit of a... Um, you know, last man standing vibe to it. We, you know, Devin Brown and and he gives the team headphones. Lincoln Keenholz gives this guys uh, Tommy John's, the most comfortable underwear on the planet. Uh, what is Will Howard giving? You know what I mean? Isn't that important? He's giving you headphones that look like underwear. <laughs> wow, he's different. all. He's only had six weeks on campus, Berm. Like he. He has. He doesn't know what they like or what they need yet. He's still learning what's on their Christmas list. That's right. true. He, but it, it, with all seriousness, like Lincoln Keenholz, his skill set, uh, what he can do. I, I mean, I I think he played so well, all things considered, in the Cotton Bowl. And I know that uh, from our conversations that we had with with Ryan Day this off season, that he he was pretty happy with Lincoln Keenholz in the way that he performed in the Cotton Bowl. All things. Uh, considered so uh, what you get out of this spring is going to be super interesting because i i'm of the mindset that uh, um will howard needs to have a high percentage of the snaps if he's going to be the starter uh with the first team uh t you know offense but you also kind of owe it to devin brown and lincoln Keenholz to give them a chance to have those reps as well so i, I am fascinated by the idea that ryan day is going to have to make some decisions about splitting this almost three ways and how how do you do that i have a question i like question what, what is this like is 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 this a competition is it a competition in name only like all the assumptions you would make about a transfer quarterback right that's played a lot and is a veteran i think it makes sense to make them about will howard but like Will Howard is like not a perfect quarterback prospect. Like he's not coming to Ohio State with a couple of championships and fifty touchdowns under his belt, right? He's no, a guy that has to get better. Field versus Matt Baldwin. I mean, this is a this yeah, that, right. So then, like, what is this? <laughs> is is this a 
is this a spring quarterback competition or is just the, you know, Will Howard's going to be our starter and we'll, we'll play the game we have to play to keep everybody happy. Like I, I I'm asking it cause I, I, I don't know. I suddenly feel like I have less of a firm grasp on it than I had before we started having this conversation. And I don't know if I'm just losing my mind or, and someone needs to talk me back down. I I'm of the mindset that what I think it is and what I think it should be are two very different things. Uh, I think it should be an open conver- competition between Will Howard, Devin Brown, and Lincoln Keenholz. I think what it is is a is a uh, battle to be see B. Will Howard's backup, and that's what I think it is. Should it be that way? I don't think it is, but should it be? I don't think it should be, but uh, that's what I think it is. Yeah. I mean, I, again, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe I don't have a, a firm grasp on it either, but it. it if you take Will Howard, it feels like the die is cast there. Like you've made your decision, and your decision is not based solely on what you think Will Howard could be, but also what you have returning at quarterback because you wouldn't have been involved in that portal pitch if you were 100% sure, your Ryan Day, that you had an answer in either Lincoln Keenholz or Devin Brown. So, in, a, in, in my mind, in reading this situation in the tea leaves, that's why I think it's a situation where Will Howard is going to get every available first team rep that he can possibly get. And then the, the quarterback competition is between Devin Brown and Lincoln Keenholz so that they can have a clear idea of what their future is by April 14th. And Ohio State can have a clear picture if on practice 16, you need to do something different with your offense because they're so. Both of you guys have made points here about pros and cons or or upside with Devin Brown and Lincoln Keenholz. If you throw all of the offense on Will Howard's plate and on April 13th, he goes two for 17 in the spring game. And we have four open practices where we're like, oh, that's not what we thought was going to happen. Then, you know, and whoever emerges from this separate battle, which I mean, maybe I'm maybe this again is just what I think should happen or could happen um, and not what will happen. Devin Brown and Lincoln Keenholz battle it out. And then they go into summer thinking, all right, I beat out the other guy. And I think that I have a chance to beat out this version of Will Howard in August. That's not a bad situation for Ohio state to be in. And they haven't sacrificed all that much uh, with Devin Brown or Lincoln Keenholz in terms of building the offense. Cause they already have some, built-in knowledge and experience within that system. So I think that's how it would be treated. And it's the possibly the best path forward to allow you to have two guys. And if you feel the need beyond that, you still have a competition in some respects in August. Now, I don't, I don't know if that would be the outcome that you get to, but I do feel like that's probably the way it'll be managed. Yeah. I think, I think I agree with, with you, Austin and, and, and Burma. So like, I, I think the, I think the reality of the situation is there, there's two guys battling to be Will Howard's backup. I, I I do wonder if that's how Ryan Day will catch it when we talk to him though. Like we didn't really when we talked with Ryan Day last week, we asked him like about bringing Will Howard in, but I don't I don't really know that we asked him much about like the competition itself or like how he actually sees this playing out. And I'm assuming he will get asked that when we talk to him on the first day of spring practice. So like, does he does he describe this as a, an open competition between? the three guys we're talking about, or does he find some other way to, to finesse it? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I think part of this too, or at least part of my uncertainty or sudden uncertainty is that like this time last year, we were talking about quarterback competitions and I was of the mind that like, you know, what, you know, it'll be interesting to watch, but however it shakes out, well, Ohio State will have a good quarterback. And that didn't happen. Um, or at least good enough quarterback. And that's put a little, I don't know, doubt in my mind about, this being like a slam dunk situation, I guess, for, for Ohio State, or at least makes this spring, I think, like way more important than it would be otherwise. Because um, you can't, I don't think you can play around with it the way they did last year. There, there seemed to be a fair amount of uncertainty, like leading up to the season, about who exactly should be Ohio State's starting quarterback. And I don't think it'd be a great thing if they find themselves in that situation again. So for Ryan Day's sake, for Ohio State's sake, I hope someone makes it clear that they need to be quarterback, quarterback one. But I don't know that I look at the room, at least for the spring, and think to myself, like, 
that's definitely going to happen. Like, I think, I think there could just still be some, some gray area here that carries over into the summer. And maybe that gets cleared up by someone deciding they're going to leave because they don't have an answer coming out of spring ball. Um, but I almost feel like they, they kind of need to find one coming or need to have one coming out of spring ball. Cause I, I don't think the, the journey they went on last year to try to find their starting quarterback that did not yield terrific results. Yeah. I'm not going to call it a journey. I'm going to call that a bad trip. Um, <laughs> and it, it, and some of that is makes it incumbent on Ryan day to be much more uh, upfront and forceful about what he's looking for out of his quarterbacks and demanding a decision almost of himself by the end of spring, I think, as opposed to saying, we're going to let it ride. Now, I can guarantee on Tuesday, he's not going to go out and say, well, Will's our starter. And this is what, like, that's certainly not going to happen. But I think if you look ahead, it, it is on Ryan Day and Chip Kelly and the coaching staff to decide this is our guy moving forward at the end of spring, because you, it, to Bill's point, you cannot have a repeat of last year. What that did to Devin Brown and Kyle McCord from a confidence standpoint was uh, extremely detrimental, and you cannot replicate that again this year. Cannot. I I also think that carrying trying to carry it over into August does a disservice to the players. If you're talking about tough love and honest conversations, then you have enough. I mean, I understand that there are twice as many practices available in August, and and all the points that Ryan Day has made about carrying things over and one through 15 and then picking up with 16. I've, I've been covering him long enough to know what he wants to say and what how he wants to manage it, manage it and how private he wants a lot of those conversations to be. And I respect all of that fully. I, I'm not asking for him to change that for my benefit, but I like to Berm's point there, you know, it, it didn't the way they set it up last year for Kyle McCord and Devin Brown didn't do either one of them any favors. And now if you're going to add in Lincoln Keenholz to this conversation between the three of them, you need to, I think you have to have a clear path forward for what you want the offense to be and what you view as a realistic career path for all of these quarterbacks. And it, he probably won't say by April 13th that he's that Will Howard is the starter. I'm not expecting that he will. If you're not going to do it with Justin Fields, you probably don't have any inclination to ever do it, but this has to be more like, well, Dwayne Haskins and Joe Burrow, like this is where it currently is. You have to be willing to say that. And yeah. even if it's not publicly, privately they need to know. And the rest of the team, I think, needs to know, especially, probably especially if it's Will Howard, because there shouldn't be, a summer of workouts where Ohio State does it. Like, is this veteran guy that they brought in from the portal? Is he the actual quarterback here? Like, I, I don't, I think for the good of the team, not for the good of the podcast daily, <laughs> there has to be clarity about what they're going to do here. Cause this, this is an all in year. Like, for Ryan Day and for Emeka Ibuka and for JT Tuimolo, like, they deserve to know who their quarterback is and the quarterbacks deserve to know where they stand. Do you think Ryan Day ever thinks to himself <clears throat> in his office, like, I wonder, I wonder if this is best for the podcast daily? A lot. Yeah, I think there's that's yeah, a regular probably, conversation. Right? Maybe he should stop thinking about that because it's, it's clouding oh. <laughs> the important oh. decisions he actually has to make. No, I, I mean, I, I, I think we're all in agreement that. about that, right? Which was like, which then like raises the question, I suppose, of like you have five scholarship quarterbacks in the room, but I think very clearly. Will Howard, Devin Brown, and Lincoln Keenholz, I think, need to get almost every single meaningful rep this spring. So then what does the spring look like for the two early enrolled freshmen who are just kind of like kind of hanging out and, and biding their time? Like I, I don't I don't know. I, I can over the course of 15 practices, I don't I don't think that there are enough reps to go around for five scholarship quarterbacks. But at the same time, you have to keep Julian Sane and Aaron Olin like engaged um, and and believing that they are the future of, of the program. So that's going to be like an additional thing packed on top of all this that Ryan Day is going to have to balance. Yeah, and I think that brings into, you know, the four, the question of who, who are those guys working with this offseason? Uh, who are, you know, because we expect Chip Kelly and Ryan Day to be pretty hands-on, I'd imagine, with Will Howard. Um, and Todd Fitch, obviously, who has been vital for Ohio State in the quarterback room, the last couple of years, I would think then would be spending most of his time with Devin Brown and Lincoln Keenholz if this is the way it's working out. And who are those guys spending their time with? Or all they're getting are mental reps in the spring. Um, you know, it's a big enough adjustment for kids coming out of high school to college 
uh, and making that transition from even if it's high level football like Air was playing in Georgia or or what Julian Sane was doing in California or coming from Alabama, like it's a big adjustment. And there's enough, um, you know, in the way, and there's enough distraction, and there is enough non football related stuff that these kids have to deal with and are fighting through and trying to figure out where they fit and how they fit. That if you go into the spring and you don't have at least some idea of how you're developing them this spring, even though we know it's not about them in 2024, you still have to have a, a very distinct and, and laid out plan for them this this spring. Um, and otherwise you risk losing them, not to the transfer portal or whatever, but just losing them mentally and losing their engagement. And if that happens, then their careers can get derailed before they even begin. So. Um, you know, we, we've all heard conversation about air and, and the, the rumors of him having some tough adjustments uh, to make. At, and, and Julian's going through the same thing, except for he had the, at least a slight advantage, I guess, that, you know, he was at Alabama and has already had to make those those big decisions about his life. And so you, you'd really like to go into spring and come out of spring without adding more on their plate to make them have extra pressure or extra concerns about Hey, where is my life going? Not just where am I going as a football player? Yeah. And <clears throat> even though it's become much more common for and an almost like exclusive that early enrollees are going to show up, we've seen enough of these spring practices where it's not just a quarterback. Like you're not going to get meaningful reps with the ones and twos. Like there's going to be at the end of scrimmages, the freshmen are going to go out there and they're going to get a taste of a few plays that they know how to run. You know, it, it's more difficult for the quarterbacks. They have much more to learn. They have much more responsibilities than than a wide receiver or a running back going out there for their first time in the spring and where they can get their feet wet. So I I think that it's that's an age old coaching dilemma, especially if you have you know two quarterbacks at the bottom of your depth chart who have high ceilings, but they're not going to tap into those in year one in a in a way that matters to a national championship team. So I got. I don't know that they'll get like any tangible reps in scrimmage situations that we watch. And that's fine. Uh, I don't think that, that means that they'll be disengaged because that figuring out where you're supposed to go uh, in each practice takes some time. We hear that every single year. Oh, it's the first time you've been through it. Like these guys don't even know where to line up. Now, that's sometimes underselling the intelligence of these high level and five star quarterbacks uh, who, who have a knack for doing this anyway. But, you know, they're going to get to throw a lot in routes on air. They're going to get to do the the one inch throws over the top of the net. They're going to have plenty to keep them engaged without Ohio State needing to or wanting to sacrifice what we're talking about for scrimmage reps for these top three. However, they decide to structure it. Like I don't, I don't think it's going to come at the expense of figuring out the st a starting battle, a backup battle, or a three way battle. Whatever Ohio State winds up having. Yeah, and no, some, yeah, for those no, early enrollees, sorry, Bill, for, for those new guys, like getting back to practice, getting back to a regularly scheduled life uh, of being on the field is actually probably something they need as opposed to having this the free time that you know college allows you sometimes when you get there and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm able to do what I want. I think some of these guys may actually need that structure to, to keep them engaged. So that, that is a fair point. Yeah, and it's not like, I was just going to say, <clears throat> this isn't necessarily foreign territory for Ohio State, right? They have to do this most years. <laughs> yeah. Keep really talented, highly regarded freshman quarterbacks um, from feeling like uh, they're being cast aside or whatever in name of you know the guys who are actually going to play. So I, I think if anyone, now this is different with two and like the weird timing of things, but I think if anyone is equipped to handle this kind of situation, it would be Ryan Day because he's had to do it basically you know, the entire time he's been at Ohio State. Guys, that's the end. The position previews are done. The Should we do more special teams? No, no I don't okay. think we're good. Great <laughs> question, <laughs> though. On Monday. Yeah, Berm's going to do a solo 25-minute special teams breakdown on Monday to get you guys through and get set. Start of next week, we'll be on uh, Spring Camp Eve, so we'll get you set for that. We'll be uh, at Roosters on Monday as well, so we'll have a lot of thoughts uh, as we get ready. Um, it's, it's finally here. Uh, and we don't have to keep projecting. We can start talking about some things that we actually see 
uh, once the Buckeyes confirm uh, the entirety of that practice schedule. But looking forward to some open viewing periods and breaking that down with these guys, Bill Landis and Jeremy Birmingham. Thanks for joining us all week long on the podcast daily. Have a great weekend. I'm Austin Ward. We'll talk to you later.